Okay, so in today's notes, we're going to continue looking at parallel lines. It is never acceptable to change any of the original parts of a figure, but you can draw in new lines, segments or rays that will help demonstrate something. Such lines are called auxiliary lines. Recall the parallel postulate from unit one. The parallel postulate says that through a given point that is not on a given line, so in our diagram, point P is not on AB, there is exactly one line that can be drawn parallel to the given line. So this line right here is the one and only line that can be drawn parallel to AB. So we can label it L. So L is parallel to line A. So if you look at question one, it says find the measure of angle W. So angle W is this angle right here. Right now, as this picture stands, I don't have any way to find angle W. So we add a line to this picture and we add a line through the vertex of angle W that's parallel to the other two given parallel lines. So let's sketch that line. You wanna indicate that it's parallel. So mine actually, my line's a little bit to the left, so I'm just gonna thicken that line, make it look better. And I'm gonna put the arrow to note that it's parallel to the other two. And then we're going to use our parallel line properties and always look for your alternate interior angle pair. So if this angle right here is 41, then this angle right here is 41 because these two parallel lines cut by a transversal form congruent alternate interior angles. So this angle is 41 degrees. And on the other side, if this angle is 35, then this angle here is also 35 because looking at these two parallel lines cut by transversal, these two angles are alternate interior angles. So now this is from unit one angle addition, the measure of angle W, the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. So 41 plus 35, so the measure of angle W is equal to 76 degrees. Okay, an example two, we need to find the value of Z. So this diagram looks very similar to the diagram in number one. So through the vertex of our missing angle, we're gonna draw a line parallel to the other two given lines. So let's sketch that line parallel. I'm gonna note that it's parallel by putting the arrow. And as I said before, try to use your alternate interior. So in this picture, the alternate interior to this angle would be this angle. Now I don't have that angle, but I know that it's vertical angle pair here is 22. So this angle here is 22, and therefore this angle here is 22. Now looking at the alternate interior angle here, so if I'm trying to find this, um, it's alternate interior angles right here, which we don't know, but again, looking at the vertical angle pair, that's 33, this is 33, and then therefore this angle is 33 degrees. So Z, is equal to 33 plus 22. The value of Z is 55. And then to finish in number three, find the value of G. And then this one says, give reasons for your solution. So find the value of G, we're gonna, through that vertex, add a line parallel through the vertex of angle G. Okay, note that it's parallel. So the vertical angle pair here would be this angle up here. 
So what I need to do is first extend this given line up here. So this angle here is gonna be the difference between 180, right? 180 and 144. So I'm gonna call this angle right here, I'm gonna call that angle X. So for my work, I know that X plus 144 equals 180 going step by step. So 180 minus 144 is 36. So I used a linear pair right there. So linear pairs, we'll use the same reasons for proofs, are supplementary. Okay, next, I'm gonna call this angle here, I'm gonna call it A. So I know that A is also equal to 36 because when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, Ultimate interior angles are congruent. Ultimate interior angles are not always congruent, so we need that premise, okay? They're only congruent when two pillar lines are cut by a transversal. Okay, and then I'm gonna call this angle right here a B. And I know that it is congruent to this angle here because of alternate interior angles. So I know that B equals 56 for the same reason above. So we can just copy that down again. And then last, I know that G is equal to A plus B, so 36 plus 56. So G is equal to 92 degrees. And that's because of angle addition, which just says the sum of the parts equals the whole. So in your explanations and your reasons, you really have to be detailed or thorough, right? We can't just say angle addition. We have to state, if you do state angle addition, we have to state what exactly angle addition is. Okay, so now some more statements and reasons for your proofs, which I would suggest adding to your index cards at some point. So let's focus on this diagram here, or this part of your table. So based on this one diagram, we know four things to be true. So if M is parallel to N, then I know that angle one is congruent to angle four. Now to save us some time, uh, I wrote down the reason by just leaving the name of the angles blank. So you always need to start with if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then and these angles are called corresponding. You need to have the names memorized. Corresponding angles are congruent. Another congruent angle pair would be angle four and angle five because they are alternate interior angles. Another congruent angle pair would be one and two, because those are alternate exterior. And 
And then the angles that are supplementary would be angles three and four. So angle three and angle four are supplementary. Because they are the same side interior angles. All right, the next part of our table goes with this picture right here, okay? If we're told to start 